Hi, I'm Avery. We got Aquila behind the camera and we got Drew manning the live stream. Today we're here to talk with some of the people at City Hill Park about public access and get their thoughts on it and what could be added and just, yeah. What are your thoughts on adding like QR codes or uh, signs in other languages for people that maybe don't speak English so they could find like, let's say bathrooms or uh, transportation, for example, easier? Um, yeah, I mean, why, why would that be a bad idea? I don't really care. It doesn't affect me. Why not? Um, <clears throat> uh, what are, what do you think about adding, like, let's say, for example, certain, I don't like a certain time every week at establishments, there could be like a low noise time for people that might be like sensitive to loud sounds um also sure why not it doesn't really affect me so um, if that if people want that yeah give them it um what would be any like public accessibility things you would add if you were able to um let me think for a sec I think especially the lack of public bathrooms is is really bad for not only disabled people but also just like people who don't have regular access to a restroom or who aren't a customer of a service. Um, I think that's like ridiculous and like the only excuses that you could have besides not wanting to pay for the maintenance of one is just like you hate homeless people. So yeah, like bathrooms are good. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah. What would be your thoughts on adding QR codes or uh, signs in other languages for people that might not speak English so they could find, let's say, bathrooms or uh, transportation, for sure. example? Yeah, yeah. English it can't be the only language. It's an uh, imperial language. The real language of this land is a Beneke. I study it, yeah. And uh, hopefully we can get all the names replaced. Lake Champlain, the real name is Pete Taubog. And uh, the real name of Vermont is Wabanaki, so I'm all for that, yeah. More of the languages, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> got a long response. No, that's perfect. Um, what would be your thoughts on establishments having, let's say, uh, one hour on a certain day every week? Uh, it'd be a low noise time for people that would be like sensitive to loud noises, for example, so they could have a better experience I don't know. it sounds complicated but i one thing i'd like to do is and i've i know i talked to one uh state rep or uh local counselor i don't know you could not a counselor but a guy up from colchester he's a state senator about uh getting rid banning loud pipes uh i think they're really disruptive um and i think they terrorize a lot of older people and uh so there was a bill that he had started to draft and uh, that other states already have in place and it was put on on the side because of the pandemic broke out right when he issued it it was like in january of 2020 and so it was sort of like okay we got other problems right now than lab pipes but i'd, I'd like to see uh noise considered as a form of uh pollution and ter even hate the word but like terrorism is like that's what those guys do is these drive around elderly people's neighborhoods with the loud pipes it's like really not not cool um if you yourself could add any like public accessibility things uh what would they be yeah we, we gotta ban cars from the downtown of burlington i think i think there just has to be bikes and public transportation maybe get a trolley back put trolley lines back i think there used to be a trolley it's a big conspiracy you guys should check out this film uh taking for a ride it's all about uh how general motors standard oil and rockefeller and uh firestone tires uh, bought all the trolleys in 70 or 80 of the major cities in this country and had them all destroyed so they could replace them with buses. Uh, yeah, electric power, when they just did away with it with, and replaced it with buses. So, uh, yeah, they need to, we need to ban cars from the downtown just like they did at Church Street. It's turned Church, Church Street into such a great place. That's where I'm headed now. So, yeah, I'm all for that kind of thing. We need, we need to really uh, realize that this whole country has been, uh, in the last 100 years, been taken over by the auto industry and that the car cars are like everything that these streets and these towns are built around and it's just terrible it's a it's a dirty way to live the gas is just, is terrible electric power is not even safe the tesla cars are not even 
a good necessarily a good alternative so but a lot something radical needs to be done you know uh ra radical laws need to be passed to say no more you know cars that burn a certain level of fuel or make a certain amount of noise in the downtown it can it can happen i know there's uh if you can get the city council and you know other people behind it but, but thanks for doing this guys Thank you for uh, taking the time out of your day. Hi, I'm Drew from Town Meeting TV, and uh, today we have some questions about cellular access in rural communities and its relation to safety. What? Oh, can your name? Lucia McCallum. And Caroline Swenson. Great, thank you. So uh, let me first ask, have you ever been without cellular service in an area in Vermont? Yeah, I'm from Cabot, Vermont. Um, and in my town it's pretty spotty sometimes so we definitely have to make sure like the provider like covers the area but yeah like when you're driving around and stuff it's it often goes out so and how about you i have also experienced lack of cell service driving slash like hiking sometimes do you ever find it becomes like a safety issue of getting lost or not knowing where to go or any feel like just feeling unsafe that you don't have tech, uh, cell service um, I guess when you're like driving, like Caroline said, it can be difficult if you're trying to get somewhere. Um, there's definitely been times at night where I'm like, if my car broke down, I would definitely not have service around here and like, I don't know what I would do. So yeah, I guess in that way it would be maybe a safety concern. Awesome. Great. Thank you. And how about you? Uh, I've experienced the same. I was definitely like driving on a snowy road one day and it was lost service and I was definitely a little worried about whether or not I, if I got stuck what would I do yeah. and do you find that if you do you find that the network you have doesn't work but other people's networks work um depends on the area but for Cabot yeah I use AT&T um and I'd say other networks maybe don't cover it as well so like my friends will come over and won't have service at my house and vice versa all right and how about you I haven't really experienced that but I'd often when I lose service I'm not with other people so yeah awesome well great thank you both very much that was that was a really informative experience so thank you